Hello and welcome to another episode of Starting off the news this week is our sun. On screen now is a fascinating video taken by the Daniel K. Inui Solar Telescope in Hawaii, showing the detail of the sun, the likes of which we've never seen before, magnifying to take images of the sun that are only 30 kilometers across. This may seem quite big, but in terms of how large our sun is and how far it is from the Earth, this really is a remarkable achievement. The telescope is a very new one, and it's rather promising how quickly these brilliant images have been taken since its opening, leaving, well, certainly me at least, excited for what lies ahead in its future. Its capabilities will nicely complement the joint European-US project, the Solar Orbiter, which launches just past 4am GMT on Monday the 10th. Also in the news this week is a fascinating paper published in the journal Marine and Freshwater Research in which the very first documented case of a great white shark attacking and killing a living whale was reported. Until now, great white sharks have only ever been observed feeding on dead whales, but here it's described that these sharks attacked a living humpback whale and managed to kill it themselves. Novel behaviours were observed during the attack, including something called the bite and spit tactic, which is usually seen when white sharks attack pinnipeds, and is not often witnessed in attacks on other organisms. The researchers described the attack as having been a precise, deliberate and effective affair. Now over to Ben with something that should hopefully be interesting. Thanks Doug. In paleontology news this week, we've got some excellent new developments to do with Australian dinosaurs. A study has just been published which offers some new evidence for the presence of a bellisauroid theropods in a Cenomanian, or early late Cretaceous aged formation, in New South Wales. This evidence is a partial neck vertebra that displays some features suggesting it's a member of a dinosaur group called the Noosaurids, which are part of the abelisaur clade. Additionally, the paper also redescribes an astragalocalcanium, or fused ankle bone, which they interpret as also having belonged to a Noosaurid. This bone came from a late, early Cretaceous aged site in Victoria, and together the specimens represent the very first example of the Noosaurid group's presence in Australia. The ankle bone is also currently the oldest evidence of Noosaurids so far known to science, and the newly discovered presence of this clade in Australia indicates that this lineage of dinosaurs was more widespread across the continent of Gondwana at this time in history than we had previously realised. Also in the news, a brilliant new study was published recently in which fossils from the Aetosaur Stagonolepis were CT scanned, revealing in remarkable detail a three-dimensional reconstruction of its armour plating around the tail. Aetosaurs were a group of crocodile-line archosaurs which were mostly herbivorous and existed during the Triassic period, and the specimens examined here come from a site near Elgin, a town in Scotland, which is actually the same place where the very first Aetosaur fossils were found. The scans have been able to show the morphology of the bony armour on the tail, and the success of the results indicate that future CT scanning of the fossils from the site in Scotland could reveal some more excellent details of anatomy. So some great paleontology news this week. Back to Doug in the studio, who's had a haircut. I haven't had a haircut. Oh, sorry, I thought you had. No problem. Anyway, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, we'll see you on Sunday.